What's up everybody? This is Tony with Alternative Living Spaces where we convert shipping containers into luxury tiny homes. And in this video, we're going to be discussing the topic of insulation. Specifically, we're going to answer the question of what is the best way to insulate a shipping container home? People often ask, can you put a shipping container home in a hot climate or in a really cold climate? And the short answer to that question is absolutely. Now there are a variety of insulation options that you have when building out your shipping container. Uh, probably the most common options that I've seen people use are traditional bat foam insulation, uh, insofast insulation, or closed cell spray foam insulation. Uh, now there is a big difference between all three of these products, and there are specific times when uh, one product is gonna be a better option for you than another product. Um, so maybe starting right off, we'll just discuss the bat foam insulation. Uh, now this is definitely the most affordable option. Uh, this is the most common insulation that we see here in Vegas for track homes and things like that. Um, with containers, you do need to be aware of condensation. And so if you're in a climate that is really cold or very humid, this would not be a good option. Um, but here in Vegas, you know, I see, you know, tons of people building specifically shipping container offices that go to construction sites and they're using bat foam all the time. And so um, if you're building out an office, maybe a home gym, you're in a dry climate, that could really be a cost-effective method for building out and insulating your shipping container. Um, for those of you that are looking to live in your container, maybe full-time or even part-time, uh, you may wanna consider going ahead and upgrading your insulation to either InsoFast or to closed cell spray foam. When you're living in your container, you have to keep this in mind that if the weather outside is really cold, say it's below 40 degrees, and you're inside your shipping container, uh, you have the heater on, you're breathing, there's gonna be more moisture in the air, and ultimately there can be condensation created on the inside of the container walls. Now this is a really bad situation because anytime you have moisture in the container, uh, it means it could lead to mold or other problems. Uh, so if you are building a, a tiny home or something that you're going to be living in or maybe even running out on Airbnb, I definitely would recommend going with either InsoFast or spray foam. Now what InsoFast is, it's actually corrugated foam panels that adhere to the interior of your container walls. It's a product designed specifically for shipping containers um, and it is fairly affordable. The R value, and R value just means the rating, the insulation rating, um, is okay on it. I think it's around R13 to R14 for the InsoFast. Uh, bat foam is very similar if you go with about a four inch thickness, um, but spray foam, you can get a lot higher R values. So for example, we're here in Las Vegas. Uh, Las Vegas can get really hot in the summer. I mean, we hit 110, uh, maybe one or two days in the summer, we might hit 120. And you know we've done shipping containers with all three types of insulation and it's worked. You know, the office that we use full time at our facility has bat foam insulation. And in the summer, when the AC is running, it's fine. If you turn the AC off, it does heat up fairly quickly. Uh, we've done units in Vegas with InsoFast insulation, and that's also worked out just fine. Um, now, if you're in a really cold climate, that's where spray foam insulation really is going to make the most sense. Uh, spray foam insulation typically has an R value of about R7 per inch. And on a lot of our models, we'll do three inch thickness of closed cell spray foam. Uh, one of the benefits of it is at three inches of thickness, it actually becomes a vapor barrier. Uh, this means if it's really cold on the outside and you have your heater on the inside running and you may have maybe two or even three people sleeping inside, the moisture that's being created will not penetrate into your container walls. Uh, that ultimately means that you're not gonna have issues with mold. So probably the, the highest quality insulation you can use is the closed cell spray foam. And depending on how you frame out your container, you can have you know as little as three inches of spray foam or up to maybe four inches on your sidewalls and six inches in your ceiling. Um, now, what we have also done is a combination of spray foam and bat foam. So if you're in a really cold climate, um, it may make the most sense to do three inches of spray foam so that it becomes a vapor barrier on your sidewalls and on your ceiling. Uh, but then also even dropping your ceiling an additional four inches or maybe an additional nine inches so that you can put bat foam in your ceiling and really increase that R value. Um, now a topic we, we also wanna address is the floors. And, and what is the best way to insulate your shipping container floor? Um, we've done this a few different ways. Um, 
One way we've done it is one inch rigid foam board panels. Uh, they don't have a huge R value. It might be about R5, uh, but if you're in a climate that is pretty moderate, that could be a really good solution. And when we've done that, we've put those panels right above the container floor, and then we've laid our laminate floor directly on that. Um, another option is to spray foam the underside of your container. Um, now, for example, we're doing a project in Joshua Tree, California. They have regulations there that say the insulation value for the flooring has to be R35. So we're gonna be putting close to six to seven inches of spray foam insulation directly on the underside of the container. Um, now, while that's gonna create a really good R value and keep the container really well insulated, it is very expensive. And so just a, a little bit of numbers on each of these. So uh, spray foam insulation, like we just spray foamed a couple 20 foot containers. Um, we did it at about three inch depth and to spray foam a 20 foot container for the ceiling, the side walls and the end walls at about a three inch depth here in Vegas was about $3,500. Now, if you're looking to do in so fast in your container, it's probably gonna be about half that price, closer to about $1,800. And if you do bat foam, it could be half that price, closer to about $900. So there really is a variety of price range within the three options. Um, like I mentioned earlier, if you're looking to do a home, and this is something you're gonna be staying in long-term, spray foam really is a great option. Um, now, all those options can be done as a DIY. Uh, bat foam is probably the easiest. Uh, in so fast, they do provide a lot of really great instructions on how to actually install it. Um, and interestingly enough, it's using a lot of glue. And so uh, when you're doing in so fast insulation, you're using typically Loctite glue. And I know when we do a 20 foot container, we probably go through maybe 60 bottles of it um, and they're not super cheap. So you may spend $500 on glue to adhere those panels to the wall. And you definitely don't wanna skimp out on the glue because at the end of the day, that's what's gonna adhere everything on the inside to your container wall and make sure that it lasts a long time. Um, if you're doing spray foam insulation, you know, a lot of times we'll subcontract that out to a local company, um, but sometimes you can look into getting the froth packs as well. They sell them online. You can get a kit. It's got like a part A and a part B. It may cover around 640 square feet. Um, and, and really that's board foot. So when you're talking about spray foam, it's interesting, but you'll want to look at a wall. So like a 20 foot container, you have a 20 foot by eight foot wall. That's 160 square feet. Now at one inch depth, it's considered 160 board feet. You go to two inch depth, it's now 320 board feet. Um, is that right? Yes, okay. And then you go to uh, three inch depth, um, my God, 160, 320, 480. So 480 board feet. So a froth pack that is 640 board feet would go a little bit more than one of the 20 foot sides at a three inch depth. Um, so, so typically like if we're doing a 20 foot container, we may buy three of those froth packs um, of the 640 square foot ones. And uh, with that, you're probably looking about at least 800 bucks a froth pack. So you might be in around $2,400. Uh, but like we had mentioned, spray foam really is the highest quality. Um, so with that, um, I hope that brought some clarity on the best way to insulate a shipping container. Um, if you're in a really cold climate, that is no problem. You can still use a shipping container. If you're in a really hot climate, that's also no problem. As long as it's insulated properly, you can use your shipping container wherever you're located. Uh, so with that, really hope you enjoyed that. Excited to get more content out to you here shortly. Um, if you have any questions or you just want to learn more about what we offer at Alternative Living Spaces, you can check us out online at www.alternativelivingspaces.com. Oh, 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 oh,